Welcome to an orthopedic approach on how to examine the hand. In this video, we will briefly revise the basic anatomy and demonstrate how to assess the hand, with particular emphasis on the sensory and motor components of the peripheral nerves. The thenar muscles are part of the intrinsic muscles of the hand and collectively form the thenar eminence. They are responsible for fine movements of the thumb. The hypothenar muscles are also part of the intrinsic muscles of the hand and collectively form the hypothenar eminence. The four lumbricals are important for finger movement as they connect the extensor and flexor tendons. The dorsal and palmar interossei assist the lumbricals with flexion and extension at the different phalangeal joints. The anatomical snuff box, also known as the radial fossa, has a floor, which are the carpal bones, a roof, which is the skin, and three borders. The tendon of the extensor pollicis longus, making the ulnar border, the tendons of the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus, making the radial border, and the styloid process of the radius, making the proximal border. The sensory component of the radial nerve supplies the lateral aspect of the dorsum of the hand and the dorsal surface of the thumb, index, middle, and half of the ring finger. The motor component supplies the extensor muscles in the forearm. The sensory component of the ulnar nerve supplies the little finger and half of the ring finger on the dorsal and palmar aspect. The motor component supplies the intrinsic muscles except for the thenar muscles and the lumbricals of the index and middle fingers. The sensory component of the median nerve supplies the thumb, index, middle and half of the ring finger on the palm. The motor component supplies the thenar muscles and the lumbricals on the index and middle fingers. As with all orthopedic examinations, we follow the look, feel, move and special test approach. So, we start by looking for visible pathology on the palmar and dorsal surfaces of the hands. Many conditions of the hand, for example infection or arthropathies, present with palpable signs. Therefore, we feel. We feel the temperature of both hands. We assess the pulses. We palpate the thenar and hypothenar eminences. And we assess for palmar thickening. Again, we feel the temperature of both hands. We do a metacarpal joint squeeze to assess pain and we do bimanual joint palpation to feel for any abnormalities. To assess and compare the radial nerve sensation on both hands, we apply light touch to the first web space. To assess radial motor function, ask the patient to extend their wrists while applying resistance. Ask them to extend their fingers. And also their thumbs. With radial nerve fallout, a patient will present with a wrist drop. To assess median nerve sensation, we apply light touch to the tip of the index finger. To assess median nerve motor function, ask the patient to make an OK sign. Ask them to oppose their thumbs. and test for finger flexion at the MCPs and PIPs. Also assess flexion at the DIPs while stabilizing the PIPs. Also ask your patient to flex their wrists against resistance. In the Tunnels test, you tap across the median nerve. If the test is positive, the patient will feel an electric shock into the middle finger. For the Phalen's test, ask the patient to flex their wrist for one minute. If there is a sensory abnormality after less than one minute, it is considered a positive test.
A patient with a proximal median nerve injury may present with a hand of benediction. When the patient is asked to make a fist, they are unable to flex the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the middle and index fingers. To assess ulnar nerve sensation, we apply light touch to the tip of the palmar surface of the pinky finger. To assess ulnar nerve motor function, ask the patient to abduct and adduct their fingers against resistance. To do the Froman's test, put a piece of paper between your patient's thumb and index finger while trying to pull the paper away. A patient with an ulnar nerve injury presents with unopposed extension of the metacarpophalangeal joints and unopposed flexion at the interphalangeal joints of the little and ring fingers, resulting in an ulnar claw. We hope that you found this video handy. Since we use our hands every day, it makes sense that approximately one in four consults as a junior doctor will involve some sort of hand condition. This video aims to serve as a guide in your learning journey, but the best way to learn the hand examination is through practice by seeing patients.